and you are listening to Conversations with Cuddy. Hello, everybody. First, I want to say Happy New Year. And I have a legendary, one of the legendary voices of our time with me today, the beautiful Dawn Robinson. How are you today? I'm yeah. good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, yeah, thank you for being here and taking out your time. Uh, so I, just, I guess we're going to jump right in, and I'm going to start from now. I want to start with uh, Stiletto Entertainment, LLC. You want to talk a little uh -huh. bit about that? Yeah. Wow, you're starting at the end first. So, okay, yeah. um, mm -hmm. Stiletto Entertainment is my, that's my, um, my LLC. Mm -hmm. So that's my company, and it, it's just new. It's brand new. Um, I decided that it was better to be, you know, I've always been a, the mindset of having my own and being a businesswoman as opposed to just an artist. Exactly. Um, and I've been trying to do that for years with En Vogue and, and um, then with Lucy Pearl. And we never really did anything. So now it's like, okay, let me start my... Now, Raphael had his own. He did have his own label. Mm -hmm. um, Pookie Records. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pookie Records was his label. Um, but yeah, we never started anything for, for Lucy Pearl together. So I'm like, okay, well, now's, now's the time to do that. So I have Stiletto Entertainment, and I'm going to have artists uh, on my label. I'm doing my book. So everything that I do business-wise is going to th be through my Stiletto Entertainment exactly. label. Yes. Yeah. That's smart. Let's yeah. get into the I'm building book. my... I'm building my logo right now. Some some people are doing a few logo ideas for me because I don't have one yet. So yeah, they're putting that together. What'd you know, say? I'm sorry. I said I know it's gonna be good. It's gonna be dope. But thank you, uh, thank you, Cuddy. Speaking of the autobiography, I wanted to go into the book. Is it an autobiography? Before I just brashly say it, it. is. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. It is an autobiographical book. Um. And people keep saying, well, you got to tell all. And I'm like, no, it's not a tell all. It's just to tell my story, tell my mm -hmm. truth. So, um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of stuff exposed and a lot of people exposed, but it's the truth of what happened. You know, I, I get, I'm getting a few haters that come through and they're really, to me, they're, what do you call it? When they're not, when they don't have the courage to be who they are and just come uh -oh. straight out and say, this is my real page. They mm -hmm. come with these fake profiles and, um, Someone even started a page to say uh, Dawn's broke ass or um, let's stop Dawn Robinson from destroying other people's lives because she's so miserable, some mess like that. And I was like, first of all, you guys, you've had all these years, decades that I've been out of the group that mm -hmm. you could have easily, if you had something to tell, you could have easily said that in all this time. But now, and no. it's funny that I always say, you know, when you're doing something, when you have people in opposition of you, when, you, when you're on the move and you're actually doing something with your life, mm -hmm. that's when the people come out of the woodworks to either deter you from it or to um, discourage you, which is to deter, deter you. Um, and I'm like, okay, so now all of a sudden all these people are coming out because I am telling the truth. Mm -hmm. um, and there's something called infringement. You, I'm not infringement. What is the other word? What, defamation. Right. When you defame someone's character, you're liable to get a lawsuit from that. And I'm very exactly. careful how I speak. I'm speaking the truth because I don't want, um, you know, to hear from anybody's attorney on anything. So I have to tell the truth as it happened. And I've been saying the same stuff. There's more detail in what I'm saying now, but I've been saying all of this stuff for years, decades. Mm -hmm. And I even said a lot of it. Um, there's a few interviews where I was saying it with the girl sitting on the couch with me, uh, one of in interview was private sessions. Mm -hmm. And we did that. Um, and we performed on the show as well. And then there was a few questions and, and the, the interviewer or the journalist, I should say, for that particular show was um, the, uh, she, she was like, well, Dawn, you left the group, what happened? And at that time, I didn't expect that question from her. And when I said, mm. I was like, oh, I was careful. And I can see me even thinking when I look at the footage, I'm like, I'm thinking, should I say this or should I not? I'm right here with the girls. And I had just come back to the group. So this was 2009 for our 10th, um, our 20 year anniversary at that time was 2010. So we were building up to that 2010. Mm -hmm. 
anniversary and we did that show and I was sitting on the couch and I said, well, I didn't agree with the, the money we were being paid. We, were, we weren't paid enough. Mm -hmm. So without saying we only made two pennies a record, I was scared to say certain things, but I was still saying we're broke. You know, so I've been saying this for a while now. Um, there's some other interviews that we did, like Vibe Magazine, I said it in that article, um, a few interviews that we did. So this is, this is not new for me to talk about what happened back then. Yet I'm getting a bunch of haters coming in with cowards. They're just cowards instead of coming with their real page. They're coming with some bullshit. And I'm like, okay, but if you're it... going to come at me, come for real. Just right. let's deal with it. Let's talk about it. Because where's the lie in the fact that our producers made the lion's share of the money and our record company made the lion's share of the money? Where's the lie in the fact that we made two cents a record? Right. Where's the lie in the fact that Terry did her solo album and then I did a solo album and they kicked me out for doing the same exact thing Terry did? They kept Terry, but they kicked me out. So there's been a lot of discrepancies in like how I was treated. And I'm mm -hmm. like, if, they're, if I'm not telling the truth, you guys come with it. Come contest, what is it? I think you can test in court, in a court of law, you can test um, someone's response. If you, th if you think that they're, your honor, they're lying. Right, exactly. And if, it's gonna, you know if, I mean? if you're telling the truth, then you will be exonerated. Exactly. So, but yeah, isn't or, it? Or if I'm lying, they will, they will come out and say, no, this is not what happened. Exactly. This is what happened. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. isn't isn't it amazing that when you first dream of getting in the industry, you're getting in it to entertain, but this same entertainment is is down is overshadowed with your personal life. Um, I, this is the life that I live. It's it's you're gonna. It's like you having a nine to five. Your personal is going to be involved when you're at work. Whatever happens at your job is affecting your home life as well. So it's just the way the world works. I mean, yeah, I, I happen so. to be in the entertainment business. Yeah, but, you know, my livelihood is how I make my living. And so my personal life is affected by my lack of uh, mm -hmm. funds, I should say. So, you know, that's it's it's kind of par for the course i guess you could say yeah and i do i wish it was like back in the day like it is now with the money fraction of what people mm -hmm. get for groups and stuff because yeah. i can tell like you guys were to our generation what what the supremes were to our mothers and our fathers wow you know I mean? wow yeah like, that means a lot you really never heard of four people who voices mesh together so well like that it was well, unless it were family. I mean, there's mm -hmm. a lot of groups that came out, but it's usually family. Mm -hmm. So, so thank you so much for that. Like Sister Sledge and um, the emotions, and you know, um, even the Supremes were they weren't family, but I think Diana Ross did a lot of the background. Yeah, so they knew each other, they knew each other least. for a while. Yeah, they did. So, like, how do you learn of such a, a, a audition though? Like with no internet, and because it was before internet and everything. Yeah, that was a God moment. There was nothing else but God on that one. Uh, I was at an all day concert, um, literally from, I think it started at 1 p.m. and it went all until 11 or 12 at night, um, summer jam. And mm -hmm. my friend and I from high school would go every single year. And this year um, we had jobs. So we were like two years out of high school and we had jobs. So we got the better seats. Cause when my mom bought the tickets, I was sitting way back in the nosebleeds. Wait, you can't even see who's on stage. <laughs> You're like this. Uh, um, when my mom was buying the ticket, I was just happy to be there though. And this year, this particular year, we bought 10 seats from the, from the front of the stage. So now we got VIP and we were, um, it was in between Stevie B and cover girls. One was leaving, one was coming back on the stage, but they had to change the set in between. Mm -hmm. um, one had a band, I think Stevie B had a band. And anyway, so in between we were like, okay, so it's about 20 minutes between the band that went off and the band that's coming on. And um, we were like, okay, let's go to the bathroom, which was code for, let's look for cute guys. We were, t we <laughs> were, t we were with uh, two of our friends, Lawrence and Michael. Um, we weren't dating them, but we didn't want them to know our business. So we were just like, let's just go to the bathroom. Right. And we were really checking out guys. Can you talk about 22 to 25,000 people? And how did it go? So we went, to, we got up out of our seats. And when we got to the top of our section, there was a guy randomly um, yelled out, excuse me. And we both turned around and he said, are you a model? 
And I was like, whatever. And we played him off and we walked, we tried to actually get in the bathroom, but the line was too long. I remember we went and got popcorn and a drink and then we came back. He was still standing there at our section. And he was like, excuse me, now, now this time I'm facing him because we're walking. Mm -hmm. When we first came out of our section, we went, um, you go straight and then you walk to the left. So he was kind of behind us. And I looked over my shoulder and so did she. And he was like, are you a model? I was like, whatever. So we walked to the bathroom. Now this time when we come back, I'm facing him. Mm -hmm. And he's standing in the same spot. And he said, um, I'm a guy who just asked you if you were a model. And I was like, I am not a model. He said, well, are you a singer? Can you sing? And I was like, oh my God, let's talk. You know, <laughs> he's, now you're talking my language. Right, now you're talking exactly. about something that, that I'm interested in. And um, we talked for about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, he said that his friends were doing an audition for a girl group and they wanted three girls and I have a good look, um, but I need to know if you can actually sing. And I was like, okay, well, he said, so you can come to my house tomorrow or day after tomorrow. I said, I am not. I know that won't happen. I don't know you. Right. I am not. No, I'm not coming to your house, but you can come to my parents' house. That's where I live at home with my parents. And he came to my parents' house two days later and I sang Rapture and Been So Long by Anita Baker. And he was like, oh, yeah, you can mm -hmm. sing. Um, and then uh, maybe about a week later, my mom asked me, he said, you can go to the audition. So my mom asked if she wanted me to take her, she, if um, I wanted her to take me to the audition. I said, no, I think Dana, because my sister I was like, I, want, I don't want my mom sitting with me at an audition. I want my right. sister with right. me. Right. Um, and if my best friend uh, wasn't working that day, I probably would have had her take me. But the good thing about all of this is that, again, this was a God moment. You're talking about it just blows my mind when I think about how many people were at this concert and out of all, and you're talking about the Bay Area. So the Bay Area is full of talent. Mm -hmm. Rosie Gaines from, you know, Diamonds and Pearls with Prince, um, Sly and the Family Stone, Tower of Power, Journey, who else? Metall Metallica. Mm -hmm. um, oh my God, all of these incredible artists and there were a lot of women that I sang background with and did shows with um even though I was 16 17 18 years old I still did a lot of shows with these women so mm -hmm. I was learning the ropes from um Brenda Vaughn a woman who was um you know known throughout the Bay Area um and I think she auditioned for In Vogue but there were a few people women that I thought oh my god I'm never gonna make it because they're so much better than me mm -hmm. and they're women I'm just a kid um and I was 20 when we did the audition, but by the time the album came out, I was 21. So yeah, I was like, oh my God, I'm never gonna make it. And sure enough, I made the group. Like, and that, yeah. And that's what's meant for you, it's meant for you. That's the definition. When it's, when it's your that. blessing, Cuddy, absolutely yes. right. That is when it's your, your blessing, definition. it's yours. That's right. right. That's right. And oh wow. And then I guess I get to tell you, I'm so thankful because I get to tell you all these things about you guys. So I'm going, I'm coming to the source with it. Like I think <laughs> yes. this is purely opinion, but to me, you and Maxine are the rock stars and Cindy and, and Terry were the R and B girls. You know wow. what I mean? Wow. That says a lot. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank so, you. So like that's why but I love yeah. As a group, though, vocally, you were saying just a little while ago, the, the harmonies that we had were so beautiful and so undeniable. Like our, ma our matches, our voices matched so well to not be Definitely. family. Yes. It was pretty phenomenal, you know? It, yes. But it thank you. Everlasting. And you, you guys have made yourself immortal. Not saying it doesn't mm -hmm. matter because it does matter because you have to of tell course. your story. But right. no matter what, you, have, you guys have etched your name in stone with your group. Forever. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately yes. for us, go ahead. Cause you probably have a question that may lead me to what I was going to say. Yeah. So I was just saying like, how did that make you like go harder and make you better and make you this independent woman that you are today? How did what? Like just being like in the all group? the, yeah, being in the group and all the good things and, as well as the bad things, everything right. that culminated, just the experience of that. Right. Cause it was big. It was huge, Cuddy. It really was. It was amazing. And our success happened so fast that we had to actually catch up to the success of everything. And 
it was just magical. Like I'm just going over and now I'm writing my book and doing all these interviews that I've done over 60 interviews in the last three months. It's been mm. a lot. Actually I'll say more than 70 now. Cause I've done more than 60. I've been saying that for two weeks and it's more than that now. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it was the one thing that a record company wants and that the artists as well want to happen is the success to happen. Exactly. You put out a record, you hope that the world loves what you do. And they did. And I mean, not just the States and, you know, every hood and the ghetto with us, you know, our people there, but around, the, it was global. Right. It was global. It was Scandinavia. It was Africa. It wow. was Egypt. It was Spain. It was all the Latin countries, really, not just Spain, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, Mexico. It was, um, or I should say, yeah, Mexico and Venezuela. Come on. I mean, we were just Everywhere. Japan. And now we're talking about Asian companies, Japan, Vietnam, freaking China. I mean, oh my God, this was global. London. Germany, yeah. Yeah. you know, all of the UK. Right. And, and then, you have, then you have new girl groups coming out after you guys, like right. trying to set a footprint like you did from what you did. You know, sure. I, mean? like, I want to sound like in Vogue. Well, you know what I love is that none of the girl groups were trying to sound like us. They had their mm -hmm. own thing. Mm -hmm. Brownstone, Jade, yes. uh, TLC, Destiny's Child, um, Black Girl, Ex-Girlfriend. I mean, you name it. There were so many groups. I was proud that we were the first on the scene and everybody tried to create a girl group, not like us, but their own version. Right, exactly. Of a girl exactly. group. That's so, a better way to say it. Yeah, that was, um, that, that's always flattering. I mean, you had the 60s was the same way. All the girl groups came after. And I want to say, and I mean, Supremes had no hits for a while, so they were called the No Hit Supremes for a while. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if actually they were the first ones to create a hit. Um, and then all the girl groups came after the Shangri-Las, the Ronettes, um, Martha and the Vandellas. I don't know if that was what happened or not. I don't know who had a hit first. But, you know, it's, it's flattering when, you know, the record companies want, it's cookie cutter. Mm -hmm. They want a girl group too, because we were successful. They got to get their own version of us. And... But I love the fact that all those girl groups were like, no, we want to be our own version. We don't want to, SWV wasn't trying to sound like it. No, mm -mm. You know no. what I mean? So yeah. Um, yeah, I'm glad that they did their own thing, but I'm glad right. that we were the first on the scene. Right. What I don't like is that we were the, we were the least to be paid. That yeah, part that's... is the problem. Do you think there's anything, well, I guess it's a new day and age now. Is there anything looking back, do you think could have changed that? Not saying you, I know you wanted to, not saying you would, but do you think anything that you guys were doing together could have changed that as a group? Oh yeah, they could have listened to me. You know, yes. I was from the beginning starting to see stuff, but not really saying it at first because I was too afraid to address what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, first it was our, our producer who we you know put the group together um was very kind to us at first he was like the big brother you know put his arm around our shoulder and give us the ropes and tell us about the industry and what to expect from our success um because denny and tommy our producers had been in uh club nouveau they had been in uh timex social club so they had all these hits lean on me mm -hmm. um situation number nine jealousy like they had all this stuff going on before us they even had the tonys were signed to them at one point mm. um tony 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 and so it was that kind of like we love you guys we care about you all we're just we're not we're gonna make sure you guys succeed we're not gonna let nothing happen to you let us we're gonna protect you became abusive mm -hmm. denny became very verbally abusive to us and uh, in the studio, if we were a little too loud or we were annoying him somehow, um, he would say, y'all shut the fuck up. Mm, like and at first we were like, oh, Terry, shh, Maxine, mm. Dawn, you be quiet. You know, we were laughing at first, right? Mm, mm. And then he would say stuff like, okay, y'all get your shit and go the fuck home. Y'all go the fuck home, get your shit, and leave. And so we gather all our stuff and be like, oh my God, you know? And then we get out in the parking lot and we laugh about what happened. But mm -hmm. after a while, it was like, okay. It was funny at first. It was yeah. cute. It was like, oh, we, you guys got in trouble. Y'all, who pissed him off today? Terry, you pissed him off. Dawn, you did that. You said that. 
I was like, I know, but I didn't mean it like that. Or Cindy would say, I know he got upset with me and we would laugh about it. But mm -hmm. after a while, I was like, wait a minute. Now he's getting too comfortable. He's becoming abusive. Now, yes. Now he is saying a little too often. He is, you know, I, I remember talking to the girls about it. I went to them and I just said, you guys, I don't like the fact that Denny, you know, I know he's, he acts like he's playing, but then he really does send us home. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's not funny anymore. And he's getting a little too comfortable with saying it now. Um, and he would have what I call um, uh, brainwashing sessions. Like who, who's going to be the first to leave the group and who's going to be this. And we would sit on the floor underneath his feet. Mm -hmm. Like in front of him, I should say. And he'd sit in a chair just like I'm sitting now. And he'd look down at us like he's talking like, y'all need to do this and you need to do that. And then the industry, it's this. And this happened and this is, you know, and you guys need to be careful with that and don't do this and don't turn on each other and stay in the group. And who's going to be the first Diana Ross to leave the group? You don't want to be that. It was, he was filling our heads with guilt. If we mm -hmm. leave the group, if we wake up and we see that stuff is not right, don't leave the group. Whatever you do, stay in the group. And I was just like, okay, after a while, I'm like, what the fuck? Why is he still talking to us about leaving when we're so happy to be here, first exactly. of all? Exactly. We're not thinking about leaving. So why he's planting that seed of guilt? Why is he doing that? Why is he telling us to shut the fuck up? And I think because he got away with it the first time and, this, and the second time and the 10th time and the 12th time that he felt like he could talk to us any kind of way. Right. Because he knew that we weren't going to, we weren't going to challenge him. We weren't going to confront him. And when I told the girls that I didn't like that, he was telling us to shut the fuck up. Maxine said, well, Dawn, you know, you need to go to him and tell him, like, just talk to him about it. And I was like, okay, first of all, nobody knows who the hell I am. So if he kicks me out of the group, the world's not going to be none the wiser. We don't have any kind of, I had no leverage. Right at that point, you no felt clout. you needed it. Right. Exactly. I had no clout. But my thing was, and I think about it to this day, why was, why were you guys not upset with what I was upset about? I was upset about the fact that he was telling us to shut the fuck up. You guys should have been upset about the same damn thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody, mm -hmm. every one of us should have been like, you know what, Dawn, you're absolutely right. Like, he shouldn't be telling us to shut the fuck up. Why is he talking to us like that? That's how they should have reacted. But right. Terry didn't say anything. Maxine didn't say anything. And Cindy didn't say anything. I was the only one. So I was like, nope, I'm going to keep my mouth shut because I know that he's going to kick me out of the group the minute I say so. Oh, so you don't like how I talk to you? Oh, mm -hmm. so you can leave. Um, yeah. si sign this contract um, and we'll release you. All right. So it caused more inner problems than... It it didn't cause any inner problems because we, we all just were happy to be there. Exactly. This is the very beginning. So we weren't going to, we weren't going to ruffle any feathers. We weren't going to rock the boat. We were all happy to be there. Mm -hmm. So I just put my head down. Okay. I'm just going to sing the songs the way they tell us to. And now once our first album was successful, now I'm like, okay, wait a minute. I'm still not liking the fact that he tells me to shut the fuck up but I still don't have the leverage to say anything. So now we're going into the studio for the second album. We're, we're recording the second album under the terms of the first album. And I guess it becomes a mentality of the, the group, of the crowd. It's like a, um, everybody starts to think alike. So mm -hmm. now, okay, now we have success, but I was the only one saying, you guys, we're not getting paid though. Right. We're only getting paid a little bit of money off the road, but not nearly what we should be at this point. I know, I don't, you know, because we had never done it before. We had never had success like that before. So we didn't know, oh, at this point, you're supposed to go in and renegotiate your contract, mm -hmm. get more money, get better mm -hmm. terms within your contract. And instead of making two cents a record, you're supposed to ask for more money. And we didn't do that. So, exactly. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I have stuff coming across the grows, so should the money. So, yep. Absolutely. Yeah, because yeah, everybody around us, including Denny and Tommy, were making goo gobs of money. And the record company, um, yeah, the government, of course, gets theirs first, and then the record company, and then the managers, sorry, the producers, then the managers, then the agents, and then us. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we were the last, the least of them, but we were the ones doing all the work. Exactly. Like all the yeah. work. So, what you're saying, which is saying that you are really the boss. Because you do the work and bring That's in right. the and bring in the money and for it to be money. dispersed. 
That's right. You know For I mean? everybody else to be rich. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. Yes. That is definitely a qualm of the music industry and the way things work. Well, um, it's a qualm of the music industry with black artists. I don't know mm -hmm. why. Um, uh, what's his name? Um, Beyonce's father, uh, Matthew Knowles, made sure that his group was paid. Exactly. He was a marketing genius, and I don't know how he was able to do it, but they weren't broke. You don't mm -hmm. hear that about them. You don't right. hear that story. You may hear a little bit about Beyonce being the number one in the middle, but you know, Beyonce's parents were the ones who sacrificed everything to make sure that Beyonce and the other two girls were successful. Mm -hmm. So they weren't complaining. And everything was fine. Look, I don't care if she's the, the lead singer uh, of the group. As long as we get an equal share pay, I'm cool with that. I don't care. Exactly. Um, if I was in the Supremes, I would have had a problem with Diana Ross stepping up and being the lead singer. But again, when you're afraid to step, if, if we don't have, um, there's a reason that there's certain corporations have, a, a, um, I'm getting caught up in my words. There's a reason that corporations have a, that speak for the people. What is that? A union that speak no, for okay, the people, right. mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because one person going to the boss and saying, hey, uh, I'm not getting paid enough and I, my hours are too long and um, right. I don't have any off days and I don't have better health care and I can't take care of my kids at home. It's um, like you're so insubordinate. Exactly. There you go. Yeah. There you go. And the, but as a union, oh, now you have a force behind you. Mm -hmm. Like maybe now you I am someone, doing this. I'm sorry. Then you're thinking maybe I am doing this if if uh, the whole board is coming up and saying the same thing in unison. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But the board speaks for the people, so the people don't have to do it themselves. Right. We we need we need health care. We need child care at the job so that mothers can. They don't have to leave their kids in health care with some strangers at somebody's house and it costs them a lot of money, um, but their kids are on site with them. We need mm -hmm. um, our taxes to be taken out in a different way. So, you know, they speak for the people mm -hmm. and we didn't have that. We had a manager, but our manager was managing our producers as well. So that was a conflict of interest. If the manager mm -hmm. is um, the managers in the middle, but we got the production company here and then we got the manager and then we have us. Right. The manager is in the middle, but he's, not he can't speak for either side really no, when it came right. to renegotiating right. yeah so so it was a mess from the beginning it was a great successful situation we just did yeah. not have the paperwork to back it up financially and make sure that we were taken care of yeah and it was beautiful it was beautiful to the public yes it did yeah, its it was job beautiful to us yeah yeah so it was beautiful uh, to us as well but i started to wake up early on and was like <clears throat> excuse me where's the money yeah um we think yeah, we were bills, on the second bills don't stop right no bills don't stop but it wasn't like we had huge bills we didn't have brand new cars and car but i wanted that mm -hmm. you know i could see that our, our producers were like you know one of them was rolling around in a brand new porsche that he would lease every year and i'm rolling around in a ford fiesta with an oil leak like I'm living in an apartment. It was super cute. It was a very cute hardwood floors. It was a cute place, but it was a one bedroom apartment mm -hmm. on the ground floor. And my mom was like, okay, Dawn, you are, this is a cute place. I love it. Um, but you're on the ground floor and you are a huge star right oh, now. No, you're in vogue. <laughs> yes. And anybody, we lived in Oakland. So everybody in my building was probably black, just like me. Mm -hmm. And if they saw me park in my car, like, okay, I, that looks like the girl from, you know what I mean? Yeah. And Vogue living in my building? Like, what is what? Okay, and she lives on the ground floor, so she must be rich. Um, you never know who's watching. Exactly. You know, not just to exactly. rob me, but to hurt me in any kind of way. And she was like, yeah. I don't. So I had my landlord put a screen door, because you could just open my door and you were outside. But I had him put one of those um, um, security doors on, on the front. But I'm like, the windows, I had 11 windows in my apartment. We counted them. <laughs> and... I had like five windows in my bedroom alone and all in the living room was five more, you know, and then one in the bathroom. And I was like, my, and then one in the kitchen, I'm sorry. So yeah, 11 all together. And <clears throat> my mom was like, Dawn, you need to move out of this place. It's, it's very cute. Mm -hmm. I was only 700 a month, you know, I remember my place, but we weren't living like him. Exactly. And that was when I said, when we went to his mansion, that's when my eyes started. Like I was waking up a little bit before then, but when we went to his mansion, oh, wow, whoa. 
are you kidding? Like what? Yeah, it was, I couldn't help but the lights, you know, flashing and the, and the sirens going off in my head. Like, whoa, whoa mm-hmm. wait a minute. You're living in Black Hawk, California. You're living in like the Bel Air or the Beverly Hills of the Bay Area. You know, mm-hmm. you got to know somebody to, to drive into the gate. You have to talk to the security guard at the gate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> that kind of thing. You have to sign in. They have to see you come in and out. Yes. Thank you. They have a record of you. <laughs> yes. And people, yes. Think, people think this is just a TV movie, like things like this happen on industry TV movies. Right. No, but, this you know, is movies, real life. movies only act out real life in cases, just make exaggerate situations. Thank you. Exactly. You know I mean? So they this get is it real life. And I'm, I'm look, exactly. And I'm looking around like, okay, you got 11 bedrooms or nine, nine bedrooms, something astronomically more than I had. Um, I had one bedroom, you know what I'm saying? I was yeah. like, wait a minute. And you so, tired, you tired from touring off for years. Well, no, we weren't years. tired. We were kids. So we were happy to be on the road, but we uh-huh. were working hard. I agree exactly. with you. Yes. And my thing was, okay, you got all this and it's not to say that you shouldn't have this. It's great that you're living so large, but don't, to me, keep him, don't flaunt it. Because Mm -hmm. to me, he was flaunting it. He was proud of what he had. But when I was looking around his house, like, okay, these seven bedrooms, these, these, I'm sorry, seven bathrooms or nine bathrooms, 11 bedrooms, whatever the hell he had, it was a lot. It was big. He had the staircase that went around. You can go up either side, like gone with the freaking wind. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, okay. And he said, yeah, 20 million, you know, $20 million mansion. Mm. He was happy about that. And I was like, I couldn't even keep my mouth shut I was like wow so this is what our money bought you right whoa like dog on and he was like no 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 it was only eight million I got like, it on a floor closure fool you have an eight million like dollar steel. mansion right, right. exactly <laughs> it's like he got a steal exactly it was a deal that he got I'm like but you can still buy an eight million dollar mansion that's right. my problem I can't afford an eight hundred thousand dollar home we as in Vogue, the four of us should be able to, to afford that at least eight million. Yeah, a piece. You know? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, you know, here we are again. We're going in to do Runaway Love album. That was a an EP, but it mm-hmm. was still a new song and remix uh, of our other singles. <clears throat> Excuse me, hold on. Uh never gonna get it. Not don't let go because we hadn't done that yet. I think at this time after for, we did uh, that was for the movie, right? Yes, that was for the movie. And that was after the Runaway Love album, which was one, like I said, Runaway Love was the only single on that it was new. Um, And then here we are getting ready to go in and do another album under the same terms as the first and second and third album. Are you kidding? No, no, no. So I was like, you guys, we have to get a new manager. They were upset with me. We love David. I love David Mm -hmm. too, but David is managing us. And he's managing the producers, mm. and there is a conflict of interest. If we right. do not change this, we're right. never going to have any money. We're never going to get ahead. Right. This is a business, not personal. That's right. right. Exactly. I like him, but I like paying bills, and I like to get my job. No, I love him. Absolutely. Yeah, I, love, exactly. I love paying. Right. And I love paying bills. So, And not just paying bills. I want to be living like but our producer. He should never have Getting what you deserve. Shown, yeah. He never should have shown us his mansion. Yeah. If I didn't see that, I probably wouldn't say, oh, we're capable of this. Right, I can imagine. But you're showing us what the, it's like, after a while, slaves started looking at their lives like, okay, we need to change some shit because we're not tired of working for the massa and he got the big house and we're out here in the freaking fields picking cotton and being raped every day. Like you start to see stuff Mm -hmm. and you can't help but wake up. And that's what I was seeing, period. So how did that, uh effect like you go when you're in the studio and performing and that's still in the back of your mind after you saying that and then you have to go in the studio and still work just as hard i was pissed off so i would have conversations with maxine you know probably every other night or every once a week um max we got to change this like we got to talk to cindy and terry we deserve more money we got to be paid too everybody you know is making money um i remember reading an article on sylvia roan uh from our label Um, Atlantic Records, and it's not that she didn't have a name before En Vogue, but now she's a household word Mm -hmm. because of En Vogue. I know that that's a fact. She also had Metallica. She had, I'm sorry, Motley Crue. I don't know if she had Metallica, but I know she had Motley Crue. Oh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, she was, and they had done an article on her. Now I started to get educated. 
-hmm. Now this, you know, we're on our, and I, and I started waking up after the first album. After the second album, even more. After the third album, like, oh my God. After the fourth album, like, okay, no. No, we're not, we're not, I'm not going in the studio to do another album when we don't have money and we're not paid. Mm -hmm. So um, I brought some articles to rehearsal once. I brought an article on Motley Crue, Spin Magazine uh, article on Motley Crue. And I was like, you guys have to read this. I'm sorry. Um, they're talking about Sylvia and how she's prejudiced and how she doesn't like white people and how, you know, they called her, she was coked out. And I was like, you know, the, but the main thing to me about that article, uh, it was either Spin or Rolling Stone magazine. But the main thing that I liked about that interview was they were saying that she, they were calling her names. I was like, that's rude as hell. But the fact that they were angry mm -hmm. because she wouldn't do something that they needed them, she, them, she need, they needed her to do. And I was like, but they're not talking about being broke, but they're talking about taking their power back, exactly. um, not re-signing their deal with her. I mm -hmm. was like, okay, you guys, it's time. And then I brought another interview, a Source Magazine interview on salt and pepper because we had also done What a Man, which was mm -hmm. their biggest hit. Yes. We had done, oh my God, we had done um, Don't Let Go by Now. You know, and Don't Let Go was our biggest hit. And I'm like, where's the fucking money? Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Excuse my French, but I'm tired. And, and then when Free Your Mind came out, that was crazy, too. Well, Free Your Mind was on two albums prior. That yeah, was on Funky right. Diva's album. But right, yeah, so it was I mean, already was, big. It was already big. I was way past that. But Don't Let Go was our biggest. It was bigger than Free Your Mind, bigger than mm -hmm. Hold On, bigger than Don't Go, bigger mm -hmm. than Lies. Mm -hmm. um, all the singles that we came out with and had videos to. Mm -hmm. um and then runaway love now okay so where's the money yeah where's the freaking money when we got back from london our first time over in overseas um or i should say over in london because we may have gone other places before than overseas but when we got back from london i had this hat it was gigantic that i bought in london and it looked like a boat and i'm on youtube uh, on youtube you can find it if we were on bet for the first time Okay. And I wore a hat and we saw we sat with Sherry Carter uh, on VT. And she was like, yeah, Yo. so y'all just got back from um, London the first time, you know, how she was. And uh -huh. we were happy. But at the same time, inside, I was like, wait a minute, we just got back from London. We were huge in London. We're huge here in the States. The world loves and Vogue. And where's the fucking money? Yeah. Now, I want to say, excuse me up for the F-bombs, but I can't have when it comes to, to us. I always... I got too many f bombs, but um, speak, it's just anger coming speak, out. Speak, speak. Yeah, I am, but it's like Dawn, you know better. Like I know I can use <laughs> other words, but oh, this it's hard to say darn when it came to, comes to not being paid. It's hard to say, dang it, you know, or no. freaking. Gosh darn it. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that doesn't cut it, right? That does not cut it. Right. Um, so we were on the set. Uh, BT and before we went on um, we were getting ready getting our makeup done and stuff and I asked David our manager can I talk to you now I think we came straight from the airport straight from London to because we were in DC and I think we went straight to BT so we were getting our makeup done and it, it takes four you know we got four girls so it takes about three hours to get us ready and I had time so I was like David can I talk to you and I said he said, sure. So we went to the backstages where they have like um, pieces of the set and lighting and all this stuff, like all this equipment. And I was like, David, why? And I don't want the girls to hear me because I kept asking them, don't you guys think there's something wrong here? Don't you think we should be paid more? Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't you know, Something's going on. I just didn't know what it was because this is the first time that we've ever gone through this. There's no one in our family. Right. It's like getting a job that no one can explain. You can't go to your aunt and say, or your uncle or your nephew or your father or your mom or your sister or brother and say, hey, so aren't we supposed to like this? And can we do that? If there's no one to ask because nobody in my family had ever been a celebrity before. Exactly. Had ever been successful part. in our world. Mm -hmm. This is a new world for us. So I said, David, aren't we supposed to, what are we supposed to make money? Like, shouldn't we have money by now? We should be making money. Like, he's like, well, you are, you're, you know, you're on tour and you're doing this promo tour. And I was like, no, no, we're supposed to have millions by now. Exactly. And he said, oh, that's a pie in the sky. That's a pie in the sky. Um, 
you know, that takes, you got to sell millions of out, billions of albums before that happens. I said, we have. Exactly. We're, we're on our second, or by then, yeah, second album. We've sold, you know, millions of records millions. by now. Mm -hmm. Or actually, we were getting ready to record our second album. But but our first album had already sold millions. That's why we went overseas. Mm -hmm. Because millions of people know who we are. Right. So we are selling millions of records. He's right. like, well, he said, well, it'll come in time. You know, right. some BS to kind of like, right. she's and, waking up. And she's singles. Up. Singles were, were popular then when you go in the record store and you just buy the single on the table, the, the B-side on it. Mm -hmm. Yep. They were 99 yeah. cents, sometimes $1.99. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my <laughs> oh, my God. There was a machine in Tower Records where you could actually pick the singles you wanted mm -hmm. and put together your own CD with all the singles that you liked. Mm -hmm. and, but you'd have to pay per single. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we were huge. And Vogue, if there's other, other life on other planets, they know who we were at that time. And I'm like, dude, I, I just kept... And so even on the show when I'm looking at Sherry and I, I watch myself, I'm looking like, I'm, I'm probably thinking, this isn't right. Like everybody's uh, loving us. And what David said just now is not true. We, we pie in the sky, like, mm -hmm. dude, you, you know? Yeah, so. But you really don't have a control to change the lever. I didn't. And talking to Maxine, she was always afraid. So we would have these great conversations I would get her on my level as far as what we're supposed to do, what we deserve, what was, you know, everybody else is rich around us. Um, and we got to get Cindy and Terry on board. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to have a conversation with them so we can, she's like, yeah, Dawn, you're absolutely right. We got to get the girls. And, you know, she talks like that. And the next day I would call her and I'm like, okay, let's call Cindy and Terry. She's like, well, I'm like, Maxine, what happened? <laughs> she's like, I talked to Danny last night. <clears throat> you talk to our producer, you talk to the one who, and she said, yeah, and he told me that everything's fine and there's nothing we need to do and just leave everything alone. And I'm like, of course he's going to say that. Yeah, yeah. Denny is fine with everything because everything's working in his favor. Mm -hmm. Why would you talk to Denny of all people? Like, that's the wrong person to talk to. Um, yeah, so we never ever got a chance to really kind of like wake up Mm -hmm. and do do what we needed to do for us the four members right so when did it become <clears throat> become too much um well so we found out that we were free and clear from our production company with denny and tommy mm -hmm. um we called cindy and terry and we told them you guys we're free like we're we they have not um in other words we were signed to like i told you well no i haven't told you that part so i told you about denny David Lombard being in the middle and managing Denny mm -hmm. and Tommy and managing us. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we also had a record company, a, rec a, a, a record deal, I should say. So Denny and Tommy, again, you got two Tough Enough Productions, mm -hmm. you got um, En Vogue, and then you got the record company, which is Atlantic Records. Mm -hmm. Denny and Tommy, En Vogue, and then the record company. So we were signed, let me see, let me do that again. <clears throat> and Vogue, two Tough Enough Productions, the, rec uh, the uh, production company, and then the record company, Atlantic Records. So that's how it went. Mm -hmm. So we and Vogue were signed to um, the label, uh, two Tough Enough Productions, and they were in the middle of us with Atlantic Records. Mm -hmm. So there was a middleman, and we couldn't get directly to, to the label. To Atlantic, right. You exactly. feel me? Yes, yes. exactly. Yes. So um, we found out that we were no longer signed to, they hadn't renewed our option. Mm -hmm. Two Tough Enough Productions had not renewed our options. So we were free and clear. If we wanted to go to the record company right. directly, we could have done exactly that, straight right. to Atlantic. Right. But you didn't but know. Then in, exactly. And so the four of us agreed that we were not going to go in the studio at all to sing it because they were waiting for our, our fourth album. We're not going in the studio. We're not going to record a damn thing until this record company renegotiates our contract. Because we're still making two pennies a record per girl. Mm. that's a huge problem so we're not going in until we renegotiate and I, I I would say that Terry probably went to her boyfriend who was our producer and said well the girls don't want to go in until you guys renegotiate because we're free and clear from your production company mm -hmm. whoa oh my god so all of a sudden we didn't have the paperwork but all of a sudden we were served paperwork saying that we were signed now 
Because they got a heads up of y'all know what was going on. They got on. a heads up. Exactly, Cuddy. You got that right. So, but the thing was, Tony Granberry is Tommy's sister, Denny and Tommy, our production mm -hmm. company. Tommy's sister, Tony, was working for their production company when we first signed as in Vogue in 89. So she signed our production company paperwork and she had renewed our option because she was uh, either fired or she quit. So in the interim, they, she, they didn't know that we were free and clear from Too Tough Enough Productions because she wasn't there to make sure that we were tied mm -hmm. to them. In other words, because she wasn't there, she didn't have our, she didn't renew our option. Right. Are you exactly. following me so far? Yes, yes, I'm following you. Good, okay, because sometimes it's confusing. I know, y'all following yeah, she, out there? Uh, I, they, hope they so. I hope they so. They following, they following, they following. I hope so. <laughs> so because there was nobody there to renew our option, we and Vogue were free and clear from Denny and Tommy. Oh, my God. Now, we had a, uh, an attorney at the time, um, Stephen Barnes. Mm -hmm. We had gotten a new attorney. Stephen Barnes is a black man, very, very intelligent. I think the most intelligent uh, attorney that we've had since En Vogue, since I've been in the business at all. And he was telling us, ladies, you guys are free and clear. Don't worry about Denny and Tommy. If you were right now to go to now, excuse me, at the time we had a bunch of different deals offered to us. We had Sony Records offered us a deal. This is the first time because Sony came around again later. Mm -hmm. um, LaFace had a deal on the table because everybody had heard that we were free and clear. Mm -hmm. So they asked us uh, to sign with them and they were willing to fully indemnify us. Being fully indemnified is like having a car and your car is protected at all sides. All four sides of your car are protected mm -hmm. by State Farm on, in the front end of your car, uh, farmers on the left side, on the right side, mm -hmm. um, Prudential on the back and then triple A on the, on the left side. Right. Like you fully protected, fully indemnified all the way around. Okay. And when Denny and Tommy found out that we were free and clear from them, they sent us paperwork with Tony's signature on it, even though Tony was no longer working for them. Mm -hmm. That means that they had to forge her signature. So we had to hire a uh, handwriting analysis to come in and tell us, oh yeah, no, this isn't right. The, t the I on Tony isn't right. The T on to um, mm -hmm. Tony isn't right. Uh, the Y on Granberry, because that was her last name. She was uh, married. So her name was no longer um, Tommy McElroy. She was no longer McElroy. Mm -hmm. She was now, because he's Tommy and, and um, Tony are sister and brother. So now she's no longer Tony um, McElroy. She is Tony Granberry. But her Y yeah. is not the same. Uh, the original paperwork and the, the new paperwork is not the same. All of a sudden, we get served this paperwork saying, oh, no, you guys are still signed to us. No, no, we're not. We're free and clear. And our manager was, our attorney was trying to tell us, you guys have the right to leave and go anywhere you want right, and you get a the, better deal. You got the anywhere. right to lose control. Like y'all. Exactly. You got the right to lose control. <laughs> oh, my God. Exactly, Cuddy. We have the right to lose control. Y'all said it. <laughs> exactly. In the song. We said it in the song. You got the right to lose control. Yes, we did. And we could have gone to Capitol. We could have gone to Warner Brothers. We could have gone to RCA, MCA, Motown. And I guess the girls were too afraid, so we didn't leave. Oh. Yeah, we stay with Denny and Tommy. And then I was like, okay, I can't anymore. Um, so the record company came to Terry and offered her a solo deal in the interim. And Terry took the bait and signed because, again, she's dating Denny. So mm -hmm. she didn't want to go against him and come with us. It's like, girl, please, are you kidding? I don't care who you're sleeping with. We didn't care that you were in a relationship with Denny. That's your business. It was so cute that he was hot on her anyway. He just loved her. Like they, mm -hmm. they loved each other. It was so cute. What I cared about was the business. Exactly. When it comes to, I think men are much better at separating the business from the relationship. Mm -hmm. Girl, I love you. We got our thing. You're my girl. But when it comes to business, I'm going to make sure that I get what I'm supposed to get as Denny. Mm -hmm. And Terry was like, well, I care about what you care about, Denny, instead of caring about what we cared about as a group and the four of us staying together. Now, we agreed we're not going in the studio to sing a thing, not nothing, until the record company 
pays us or renegotiates our contract and gives us better terms. Um, before we knew it, we were heard that Terry was in the studio. So we called her at the studio and she was like, yeah, I'm here today. And we were like, uh, Terry, why are you in the studio? Well, I don't agree with you guys. So you guys can just go ahead and make decisions without me. Mm-hmm. Well, no, we can't. Right, we can't so do that. Yeah. Exactly. That's right. There's four of us. So long story short, the record company, um, by the time Terry was getting ready to put out her album about seven months later, the record company came to me and said the same thing. We're going to offer you a record deal. And Maxine, Cindy, and I couldn't make up our minds what we wanted to do. So I was like, you guys, if nothing else, what, what I see in hindsight now, I didn't say this then, but what we could have done is let's go to the record company and tell them you guys have signed Terry solo. You breached your contract with us. Mm-hmm. Even though Terry's over there with Denny and Tommy, we're over here. You're not, you're not taking care of us. What are we supposed to do in the interim while you have Terry in the studio? Because they found out that we were free and clear as well. So they didn't want to lose us. So that's mm-hmm. why they offered Terry a deal. If Terry's over here, we can't make a move without her. Right. We can't even leave the label and go. So we were kind of stuck. Mm-hmm. And we couldn't make a decision. So I was like, you know what? I don't want to lose my house. So when the record company came to me, Sylvia Rome came to me and said, Dawn, I want you to do a solo album as well. I t- took the bait just like Terry did. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do my album. Mm-hmm. So I was about, we had tour, uh, Terry was on tour, but before she went on tour, Cindy Maxine and I went to her show uh, in, at the Pantages in Los Angeles. We supported her. Um, she had two videos done. So two singles released wherever you are. Uh, another song called, um, uh, why you want to do me like that or something. There was, was another a, song. It was a Southern Bell album. I think it was a Southern Bell album. Yes. Yeah. But off mm-hmm. that album, she had two, two singles released. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's on the road. So she has tour support. I got in the studio and by the time I got to my third single, Cuddy, uh, Sylvia Rowe called me and she said, well, Dawn, I love what you're doing. Um, I had a song called Healing that I'm going to release one day. But uh, Healing, I love the songs that you have so far. I did three songs. She said, but I got to pull your album. Uh, We got to get you in the studio with Invoke so you guys can record a new album. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. So I told her, I'll do the Invoke album, but I want you to release me as a solo artist. Because I felt like she slighted me. Mm -hmm. In other words... You took Terry's Southern Girl album or Southern Gal, you took that album serious. You put her on, you know, gave her two, a budget for two videos. You put her on the road, tour support, but you're not taking my album seriously? Like, no, 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 you played me. And I'm the wrong one. I'm the wrong one to play with. So um, I, I told her I wanted to be free as a solo artist, but I'm gonna stay in the group. Mm-hmm. So I went in the studio with In Vogue. I started recording that album, what became EV3. And uh, they ended up kicking me out anyway because Sylvia didn't like the fact that I slighted her. Mm-hmm. I outsmarted her. Wow. Like yeah. all the red tape. And you were writing and you were leading a lot of songs. Uh, we didn't get to write on that album, I don't think. I don't think we wrote on that. We had a lot of great songs, uh, Right Direction. Mm-hmm. So they had to pull my vocals off of that album. Mm-hmm. Um, because everybody's like, uh, like I said, I got a few haters out there and they're like, well, you, your, your story is not consistent. Where the fuck is the lie in the fact that I recorded that? They had to pull my vocals off that album. Uh, and but, consistent with what? Because ain't nobody you, heard Exactly. Oh, oh my God. I've been saying this since I left the group in 97. This is what happened. We weren't making money, blah, blah, blah. So two pennies a record. I mean, that's a big deal. Um, they're just trying to... They're pissed off, like I said, because I'm telling the truth out there. And um, they're just upset because I am, I'm getting all this attention as, as well. Mm-hmm. So Cindy, Terry, and Rona have been in vogue for how long? Maxine has been gone for the group. I don't even know how long. But they haven't gotten this kind of coverage and this kind of uh, attention. Maxine hasn't either. Um, so yeah, that's why they're pissed off because I'm telling the truth and they don't want the truth out there. But yeah, I was like, okay, I'm going to do the album. I'll do the En Vogue album, but I want you to set me free as a solo artist. Mm-hmm. That part of my career will be over here. This part, I'm still with the group. That, does, that part doesn't affect this part. Right. And this part is my priority. En Vogue exactly. is my priority. 
Exactly. So I got in the studio. I recorded Right Direction with them, which is on that EV3 album. I recorded, um, I'm going to look that freaking album up because every time I do an interview, I'm like, I, all these songs and I can't think of any of them. But Right Direction, Too Gone Too Long, what, Whatever, the Babyface song, mm -hmm. um, which was the first single that they re released uh, from, um, from the EV3 album. Uh, what else? Um, too Gone Too Long. Oh, Right Direction, I loved. Oh my God, because it's like a country song to me. I think we, if I was in the group still, we would have gone country. We would have crossed over because it's a twang. It starts with guitar. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. Yeah. Boom. Ba. It's just a real, um, the feel of the track is very, mm -hmm. very, I was like, we are pushing the envelope with this track, with this song. And Terry singing lead first. And I think Cindy singing a part. Um, Maxine, Maxine is singing lead. Oh my gosh, she's singing yeah, lead too. I love too. it when she gets rugged. I love it when she Ooh. gets raspy and rugged. With yes, she yes. goes there. She, yes. she just goes yeah. there. Mm -hmm. um, so I had done a lot of the, the work on that album. I think we had two more songs to go. And then Sylvia flew into town for a creative meeting with us. And I showed up, I'm always late to meetings, but I showed up super late. <laughs> I'm always late, Cuddy, always. But I think they started a lot sooner than I did because by the time I got there, Sylvia was almost ready to go. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't that late. Um, usually I'm about 10, 15 minutes late, but they acted like they were there an hour or more before me. Um, because about maybe half hour after I got there, Sylvia was putting on her coat to leave. And I'm like, first of all, uh, Sylvia's thing was, so Dawn, um, before you got here, I was telling the girls, uh, that there can't be any hidden agendas, you know, nobody can have any side projects and blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay. And she said, um, yeah, so you have a solo deal. I said, yeah, but I haven't started my solo album yet. And you know mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, we can't have any side agendas because, uh, you know, Atlantic Records is putting uh, millions of dollars into this project right now. And we don't want you to have this side thing. And I'm like, um, but it was already done before, right? What do you mean? with with another member the same thing terry yeah. terry had done a solo album but we but the, she's saying in this case i said so so let me get this straight after eight years of being in the group now atlantic records has our back you guys are gonna get behind us now after all this time that we've been a group and we've been down for you guys for eight years now all of a sudden i have to believe that you guys have our backs and that you're going to get behind us financially in a different way that you have before mm-hmm so you've been making millions hand over fist. You've been making all this money from in vogue. And now I have to believe that it's going to be different now. Now you're going to have our backs all of a sudden. Is that what you're telling me? I, I just couldn't understand. Like, I just didn't trust the whole thing. I didn't mm -hmm. trust any of it. And then I said, she said, yes. And we can't have any hidden agendas. You, nobody can have any side projects. I said, wait a minute. So I said, but Terry put out a solo album. And I looked at Terry, and Terry was sitting on the couch across from me. Cindy was sitting right next to her. Sylvia was in the middle on the couch. This was a couch. Mm -hmm. And then one of our managers, and when I got to the meeting, too, I forgot to say this part. Our attorneys were sitting in the corner, and I was like, wait a minute. This is supposed to be a creative meeting. Mm -hmm. Why do we have our attorneys here? This, they're not creative. They are lawsuits. Exactly. Right. They are, you know. Business. Business. <laughs> Thank you. They're business. Come on. Why are our, our, our uh, attorneys here? I didn't understand that. And Maxine was sitting on the floor to my right. So I kept trying to like ask her questions <clears throat> like, Max, what is going on? Like, what's happening? Mm -hmm. And she wasn't talking to me. She was just kind of looking straight, looking at Sylvia, paying attention to the girls on the couch. I was like, Max, what's up? Like, so I had one of those pages where you could text. And I thought I was fancy. We didn't have cell phones yet. Mm. Cell phones Phones were not happening. This was, like I said, 80, 97. Like two um, ways. Exact two way pager. Yeah. Yes, uh -huh. two way pager. And I started texting my manager, and I was texting my ex boyfriend at the time. He was my boyfriend at the time. He's my ex now. And I said, Something is up. Meet me at Sylvia's house. I'm sorry, Sylvia. Really? Trudy was our, my manager. Mm -hmm. And I said, Meet me at Trudy's house. And um, so Sylvia said, So, Dawn, we need to know if you can. You're going to be, oh, no, before that, I said, so, I said, Sylvia, tell me this. I don't understand. I said, Terry did a solo album. What is different about Terry's solo album than my solo album? Like, what's different about that? And Terry said, she turned to me because she was turned facing them. 
So in other words, she was sitting on the couch like this, which was weird. She was facing, Cindy was sitting right next to her. So she was, face, she was sitting on the arm of the couch, sitting up kind of high, and she was facing Cindy and Sylvia. Weird, weird. And she turned to me and she said, um, I said, so what's different about Terry's solo album, Sylvia? Like, what's different about that? And Terry turned to me and she said, it just is, Dawn. It's just different. It just is. Almost like when your mom says, and you say, Ma or Dad, can I go outside and play with my friends? No, you can't. Why? Because I said that's so. That's, mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. That's the way it is. That's the way it <laughs> is. That was Terry's attitude, because it just is. Um. And I just couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, so I'm out of this freaking group today. Like, you guys are calling the shots. And after nine, after eight years, really, because we came out seven years after we met. Mm -hmm. So we met, auditioned, and all that stuff in 89, but we came out in 90. So it's, it's, it's eight years. <clears throat> wow. Nobody has my back. And instead of Cindy and Maxine saying, well, I said, I said to them, I said, you know what? I said, Cindy, because she was sitting right across from me and Maxine, I said, you guys, um, you may be in my spot, you know, right now in the hot seat, you may be sitting exactly where I'm at run, one day. Mm -hmm. So you need to think about exactly what's happening and what you guys are doing today. And, she's, and Cindy said, yeah, you're right. I need to think about that. And Maxine didn't say a word. But two years later, Maxine was kicked out of the group too. So that night they told you you were no longer in the group? Pretty much meeting? because... Yeah. What am I going to, at the time I think I had on the table, I had the, the solo deal with, it was either, I was either talking to RCA mm -hmm. or Virgin, or I had a deal on the table with um, Dr. Dre. One of those okay. was happening at the time. I can't remember what was going on. And, and so um, I, yeah, I don't know which one that was. I can't think what that was, what was happening at that time. But um, yeah, I was like, okay. So basically they were telling me you're out of the group. The next day, excuse me, I remember going downstairs in the elevator with them because our we were at a hotel, like I said, in Terry's room. We went down to the valet and the whole time we're running on the elevator, I'm out of body. Mm -hmm. I was just like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. And I was I looking know. at the floor and it was quiet on the elevator it was Cindy. Maxine and me and one of the managers and somebody else and it's about seven eight people on the elevator at the time some of them laid back with Sylvia and they were talking to her I guess about what just happened mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I was out of body I was literally like floating we got down that valley and Maxine said Donna so are you coming to rehearsal and we were on the elevator still when she said this actually and I was looking at the floor and I was so zoned out that I couldn't even hear her and she said Dawn and I looked at her and she said, are you coming to rehearsal? And I said, Max, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I'll probably be there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> right now, my life is changing. You guys are kicking me out of this group today. Right. I need to figure out my position. Yeah, and what to do the, like now. Exactly. The dawn today would have said, okay, lawsuit. I'm suing all these motherfuckers. I'm suing them all. That's mm -hmm. what I would have done today. But I didn't know my power still. I didn't know my worth. I didn't know. So I was just like, I called Maxine the next day and I said, Max, um, it was about one o'clock. And she's like, Dawn, we already made our decision. You're already out of the group. We already know oh, what you're wow. doing. What? And I think I told Sylvia, I said, so if you're asking me if I'm out of the group already, I said, yeah, I'm out. I can do battle by myself. In other words, I, can, I don't need to be in this group. I've been with you for eight years. Mm -hmm. I've done the work. You guys have made the lion's share of the money. And now you're telling me that I'm out of the group. Like, I got to make a decision because like I said, I, I, I have been in the studio with you guys every single day. Mm -hmm. I have recorded this whole entire album, which is why when I left the group, they supposedly took my vocals off the album because it was everywhere. Mm -hmm. They knew, hmm, if we take Dawn's vocals off the album, it's not going to sound the same. And, and sonically to the fans, it's going to be weird because they're used to hearing all four vocals on the album, background parts and lead parts, at least used to hearing one of the other girls. And if Dawn is gone, it's not gonna sound the same. So when I saw Babyface later on, after all of that, he's like, oh my God, I I, we went to, my ex-husband used to write for him. Mm -hmm. And so we went to the studio, his, his studio uh, on Coenga in Hollywood. Um, and he's, he was coming out of the, he was driving out of the building and we were driving in to park. And we passed each other. He stopped his car and we stopped our car. And he was like, hey. And we were like, hey. 
And he got out and gave me a hug. He said, Dawn, I'm telling you now, when you left that group, it was hard for me to take your vocals off of whatever. Mm -hmm. He said, so I didn't take your vocals all the way off. I pulled you back in the cut, in the mix. And I was like, I knew it. I knew it. I said, I, I can hear me all you over that record. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He said, yeah, yeah, you're, you're still there. Um, but he gave me too much information because I used that later. I was like, yeah, you guys said that you took me off, but you're not paying me for that record, but my shit is still on there. So I'm in turn, still singing. Like you huh? having a voice kind of backfired on you just for having a voice and knowing what was going on. It's okay. You know what? I'd rather stand for something than to lay down for nothing. Because mm -hmm. the, the world will railroad over you either way. If you stand up, you got, you're a problem. If you say nothing, you're still a problem. Mm -hmm. They're going to railroad you either way. So you guys are already making, like I said, you're making the lion's share of the money. You guys are multi-millionaires because of Invoke, and now you're kicking me out and acting like you have our backs for the first time. That's what I said in the meeting. We've been together eight years now, and now the record company is saying, oh, as if they just recognize that we exist. Like somebody said about Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. it took you guys all these decades, centuries to figure that Black people matter. Right. We've always mattered, but you always. guys have treated us like we didn't. So right. that's what I mean about the record, the record company. Like all of a sudden, oh, now you guys have our backs. Oh, got it. I don't. You trust still you. overcame, and I guess you could say that about you. At least you still overcame. That's why you still smiling. You yeah, still thank you. Thank look you. happy, and you still are blessed. So I'm glad you kept going. You know, some people don't, cannot keep going. It's I'm I'm so proud of me, Cuddy. I think sometimes when we have adversity, if you either, like I said earlier. You either lay down for everything and let the world railroad over you, or even mm -hmm. when you have adversity, and if you stay down when you lay down, or when you get knocked down and you stay down there, then life won. Mm -hmm. Life won. You got your ass kicked by life. And you can make all the excuses. That's why I'm on drugs. That's why I'm doing this. That's why I drink so much. Because, <clears throat> you know, I've been through all these atrocities and all these bad things that happened. Or you can say, you know what? Yeah, we went through a lot. You know what I mean? Black people are still going through a lot, but I started mm -hmm. my own business or I did this with my life or you can see when people exalt themselves and when they lift themselves up to say, okay, that shit happened. That was mm -hmm. horrible. And for a while, I got to say, I was very, very angry. Yeah. I was angry. I was not, um, nobody could talk to me about in vogue. Mm -hmm. You talking about F bombs now. Oh. It was every other word. And don't talk to me about them. I don't want to talk about invoke. Don't bring them up. You were hurt. It was still a Ooh, scar. I was very hurt. Yeah. yeah. And so I learned, it's like, you can either stay mad at these girls in that way and let it beat you down. What happened? You can be mad at Sylvia, Denny, Tommy, David Lombard, our manager. Mm -hmm. You can stay mad at Cindy, Terry, Maxine. You can stay mad at Raphael and Ali. You can stay angry at all these people. Yeah. Or you can use it in your favor and yeah. turn it around. But what are you going to do? Exactly. Yeah. What am I going to do? Right. Because so. people, people will do anything for you. You just got a lesson on people will do anything to you, no matter who you are to them. I'm just learning yeah. that as an adult now. Like, oh, exactly. this is my cousin and they would do this. Like, what? Exactly. But it makes no sense because to me, you're cutting your nose to spite your face. When you hurt someone that's good to you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That doesn't make any sense. Right. You guys thought that moving forward without me, was it gonna be a good thing? You mm -hmm. guys thought that. A better thing even. Exactly, a better thing, right. And oh my God, you know, not only was it stupid, but you know, I sang lead on the biggest hit. Mm -hmm. And I always spoke up for the group, no matter what, it was never just about Dawn Robinson and what I could get from me. It was never ever me, 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 me. It was never ever that. And I always say, you know, they wanted me to be down for the group, but what did the group ever do for me? The group wasn't down for me. I was down for the group, though. So, you know, it's really too bad. But, yeah, I've, I've learned a lot. I've learned my power. I've learned. Yeah. And sometimes it I is time. Am. It is time exactly. to be me, me, me. And I'm. I can't wait to see you rock out because I Thank you like so I already much, know I can't wait. I know you can do all types of genres. I can't wait to see do some rock music like you need aggressive beats to me this is just my opinion again yes! <laughs> okay honey do you have beats do you know do you know producers that do yes. that kind of stuff yes i do yes Cuddy. Yes. okay let's talk after this is over this is amazing yes because because 
I see live okay, so bands did, and stuff. One more time. Live bands and stuff is just amazing. Yes, like exactly. Well, see, I, I listened the other day. I was listening to music, and I love the system from mm -hmm. the from um, from the eighties. Uh, mm -hmm. You're in my system. Um, don't disturb. Don't disturb. This don't disturb this yeah. group. <laughs> because they had they had ballads, but the, it it sounded to me, even though they were R and B, it sounded more tech. It sounded more. Um, because I had that that sound in there, but da, 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 that digital sound mm, that they mm -hmm, had. Mm -hmm. Like I wonder if I could bring that back or do something with that. Um, and then I was listening to the Who, and the Who has a song called "Who Are You." In the very beginning of the Who of "Who Are You," they have this breakdown. And it's so badass. And then in the middle of that song, in the very middle of that song, they have this breakdown. Yeah. It's so pretty, but this is a rock band. You're talking about Roger Daltrey and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Peter Townsend, and they're mm -hmm. singing this. Yeah. You right. know what I mean? They have a voice it's meshes so with it. Oh, yes. Exactly. Yes, um, yes, yes. And so I was like, how can I take those two pieces and make a song and, and buy that sample? Because you can't just steal right. it, but buy exactly. that sample from them. And make another song so i'm like putting these ideas together in my head but i don't have a band to do that or right. producer that yes. can play it so yeah let's talk so i'm gonna go in the crate yeah and i'm gonna go back in the crates too and listen to some stuff that you know different stuff not the same exactly. people you know what i mean exactly because yes. everybody's like don't we thought you were gonna do a, a, yes. a rock album a long time ago so yeah. it's expected of me yeah. um i love that the labelle did the same thing. They were doing mm -hmm. some rock stuff on their albums as well. Mm -hmm. Or um, Mother's Finest. Yes. Ooh, I love Mother's, Mother's Finest. Like, oh, yeah. Yes. I, my, one of my best friends, she is really close with, with the, some of the group members in that group, too. Really? Yes. Okay. I'm in Atlanta, so. Yeah. You know okay, I mean? got it, got yeah, it. Yeah, so they're, all, right, they're right. always here. They're always in Atlanta. Wow, oh so, my goodness, yeah. yes. And, and, and with you, it's more than just the voice. Like, it's just your whole attitude. When I'm looking at, so that's why I sent you the video with uh, Don't Mess With My Man. It was just the way you tilted your oh, head. Okay, so, or when you looked your eyes one way, I was like, oh okay, my God. Okay, exactly. Like, that oh is so goodness. rock. <laughs> yes, thank you, Connie, you, that you- You would point your fist out and point your finger like that. It's so rock right there. Look exactly. at that attitude. Well, I was okay. trying to do a mohawk in the video, but my makeup artist was not able to, I'm sorry, Jenny. Yes, yeah, she was trying to do my hair, mm -hmm. but she's a makeup artist by trade. So she, I didn't have anybody else. I couldn't find anybody for the video in time. And Matthew uh, Ralston did the video. So he did, with us, he did um, Never Gonna Get It. And then he did, um, <clears throat> excuse me, What a Man. Mm -hmm. And Raphael was like, well, what if we get that guy to do our video? I was like, yes, let's get it. Let's get Matthew. So Matthew was like, can we do Dawn's hair in a mo mohawk without actually shaving my sides? Right, exactly. And so we were teasing my hair up and doing all this stuff. So it was kind of a mohawk. And then I had a little bit coming in the front. Um, and then my makeup, though. My makeup was just glowing. I have this mm -hmm. badass. And then it had you baby oiled up, too. You were shiny. Exactly. <laughs> she had, well, she had body makeup, and it had glitter in it. Yes. With the, with the body, um, with mm -hmm. the... Um, what do you call it? Uh, it was amazing. It's amazing. It I was look amazing. at it like I look at it about a hundred times a day. I am not gonna lie. What? So I know Connie. almost all the accents that you do and stuff. Like I promise you, like it's amazing. You are right. I was like, she is such wow. a rock star. Look at her. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay, I'm yes. gonna have to look at that video. I haven't seen it in a while. You put yes. it. You posted it to me, but I have. I didn't. Yeah, look you at have. It. You have to look at it and critique yourself and see and yeah. only, like, see how much of a rock star you are, you are just by attitude. Exactly. And exactly. the words are made. And then the words are made because men and women love it. Because the words are yes. made. And I can put it on myself of those words. Like, okay, cool. That's cool. Exactly. So I can rock out through you. Wow, that's so cool. And Raphael wrote that whole thing. Yes. He wrote, uh, well, I'm sorry. We wrote the, um, you had your chance that back and forth. We wrote that, me and um, uh, Monet. Um, but yeah, Raphael wrote um, the the verses. He wrote the verses. Mm -hmm. Wow. He told your ass not once but twice. You should have took his advice and left the man alone. You still drive by here every night because you're not around to time. When he left your mind was blown, you had your chance. And then we go back and forth. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, Cuddy. Thank yes. you. Yes. 
I'm telling you, it's been 30 yes. years. I've been rocking with you for 30 years. You I've sure known have. you, but you haven't known me. Exactly. I know but you now have, you do. So. You know now what I, I mean. Do. So, yes, so. it's exactly. amazing. Like, Divas yes. was for real. And it wasn't the meaning that everybody made a bad meaning. Y'all made Diva good. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? Thank you so much. It was supposed to be good. That's what a diva is. We, right. Yeah, it's supposed yeah, to be good. Somebody who know they self. I'm confident. Exactly. Yes, I'm the best. Exactly. So, yes. And you are, and you are. So thank you. Like, thank you for all your accolades and stuff. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else, because, you know, we could be on for like 16 hours. I have to have a lot <laughs> And I talk that much too. I talk that much. So, you know, and, yeah. And even in Lucy you. Pearl, was that his mother's name or somebody? What did Lucy No, Pearl no. He um so I had a manager at the time and I was this is after in Vogue and I had a couple of deals on the table. Um RCA Virgin Records, uh, we were talking to, and this was after In Vogue was done. I was done mm. with them. So, Raf I mean, um, Raphael contacted my manager at the time, Cassandra Mills. Mm -hmm. And he told her that I have this group. Now, Cassandra Mills was the head, um, head HBIC at Giant Records for a while. She was running the label. Like, she was okay. that woman. So, I really trusted her. I thought she was the bomb. Now you want to manage me? Mm. And um, because Giant Records had dissolved, it was no longer existing. So she was managing me and we kept butting heads about stuff. She's too strong minded. I'm too strong minded. Don't act like I'm a brand new artist because I'm not. And I will tell you off and we will be done. I know, right. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do it. Um, it's either respect the way that I respect you or we don't work together. Right. And that's fine. So uh, there were a few things that happened in the interim. We went to um, we went to Virgin Records. She didn't like what I was wearing the first time she re she re um, she canceled that meeting because she didn't like what I was wearing when I walked in her house. So oh, next week we came back. She's like, okay, this is better, but okay, we'll go to the meeting. So we had two deals on the table. RCA flew us out to New York, uh, a solo uh, deal for me, and I liked RCA's deal better than Virgin. So. Raphael had contacted her and she told me, yeah, I heard from Raphael. I said, Raphael either called me and said, I just, I followed up with you because I thought that your manager wasn't getting the information to you. So I just decided to follow up. What do you think about this idea I have? I was like, oh my God, like, wait a minute. First of all, yes and yes. Mm -hmm. But you're saying that you contacted my manager? She hasn't told me that. So uh, when I talked to her, she was like, yeah, he, he talked to me the other day. He contacted me uh, about doing this, uh, this group idea that he has. But I told him no. You told him no right. before you told me that the, uh, that the opportunity even existed. You told him no. Oh, girl. We're going to have to part ways. I know. That's it for me. That's it. I'm done. Because now, now you're telling me that you're making decisions for me. Uh, that's what I was going to say, right? Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I got a big problem with that. Because Raphael, I've known him since I was a kid. It was only from the very beginning. Lucy Pro was a one-off deal. It was mm -hmm. only supposed to be one album. That's it. One album, one, one year. Um, and, and so now you're telling me that I don't even have that opportunity. So I was like, okay, Cassandra, we're done. Right. I, I think you're because awesome. I, but look, I know I'm your boss. <laughs> exactly and we are party ways right <laughs> that day we party ways. so i got a hold of Raphael, and he said yeah i was wondering what was up because she was just kind of like telling me no while we were on the phone as if you were already told the opportunity exists and so he was like wait a minute you're telling me no but you haven't even talked to dawn yet like mm. yeah so i was like okay um, what is the idea? And he's like, well, you know, this is group situation and Ali Shaheed Muhammad Tribe Called Quest. Like, Tony look at those Tony, three Tony, groups. Raphael Vogue. Sadiq, exactly. Oh, in Vogue, Dawn Robinson. Oh, Are you God. kidding me? Oh, my goodness. Come on. That's, that's a genius one right there. It was genius. Yes, yes you yes. said it. And that is Raphael is a genius. And he said, I was like, oh, my God. So, yeah, sign me up. Yeah. Um, because again, I've known Raphael since I was 16. He was 16 as well. Mm -hmm. So we were kids growing up in Oakland, knowing each other. And um, he would play in my band. And I was yeah. just, you know, it was blues, I trusted him. It was jazz. It was R&B. It was, it was rock. Uh, it was rock. I like, oh my Hollywood. God. Like, yeah. 
It was. It, it was. was. Hollywood was it, um, the attitudes of all three were exactly. It was hip hop. It was. Mm -hmm. It was everything. It was. Everything. Yes, the scratching on the record. Now we yeah. had two other producers on that record that I got to give credit to, and a, and a songwriter. Monet was songwriter. She was writing with me for all the girl parts on the record. Um, and then we had uh, Jake and the Fat Man, uh, Bobby and Glenn, a uh, white guy and a Mexican guy that made the sound. I really give them more credit than Raphael and Ali. Mm -hmm. Raphael would come in and play like 12 bass lines over uh, a meters scratch uh, track, mm -hmm. um, a drum track, I'm sorry. Cause the meters were all the musicians from, you know, Snap, from Detroit Sound, from Aretha Franklin's band from, uh, I want to say, um, James Brown's band, like all these people coming together and making what they called the meters. And mm -hmm. they would just do break beats and just mm -hmm. sit around and just jam. And so they have an album with all those break beats on it. And uh, Bobby, which is a Mexican guy of the production company that we were working with, he would come up with like a break beat. And Raphael would listen to it and play this bass line. And then we'd listen again and he'd play something else. The next day we would come in and he they would have the making of every day or can't stand your mother or mm -hmm. Hollywood or don't like don't mess with my man you know I was like mm -hmm. these guys are genius yes it seemed like they so are much. Genius. it seemed like y'all was having fun we did it, we did it we just had seemed so, like so and much that fun. is that's the kind of feeling that I want for my solo album I really been looking for that combination of mm -hmm. where it's like wow you guys do this okay and you do that and oh my god and it just came together. Every day we would work in the studio and everything would just gel, it would mesh. Mm -hmm. um, once we were released, the album was released, Raphael started showing signs of jealousy. And I was like, wow, this is not gonna work. Yeah. It was not gonna work. So um, he would say it out loud. It wasn't signs. He would say like, we were doing um, some uh, press and Lee Bailey walked up to us at Sprite Night here in Vegas <clears throat> for the Billboard Awards. and. Raphael was standing to my left and we were waiting to do uh, an interview because there's tables full of interviews everywhere you look. There's all these Stockholm over there and Germany over there and Chicago over there and New York mm -hmm. over here, and Mississippi and behind it. I mean, it was a room full of tables mm -hmm. with all these different uh, radio stations. And um, he walked up to us and he, had his, he was pulling out his um, little dictaphone and um, he, meaning Ali Bailey, I'm sorry. And uh, he walked over to us and Rafi was standing to my left, Ali was over to my right. And we were just standing there waiting, waiting, looking around and um, look, all the stars, it was like everybody there. And it was before the Billboard Awards. <clears throat> and Lee Bailey stepped in between me and Raphael. Why did he do that? Raphael said, excuse me, I'm standing here. Don't you see I'm standing here? What the fuck? Mm. And he walked away. And I looked at Ali and I said, we are done. We are, like, because it was, so much stuff leading up to that. I'm like, oh mm. my God, like, why would he say that to Lee Bailey? He could have said, excuse me, sir. You know, you just stand in here. Like, oh, he, stepped no. in. he could have made a joke. joke. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, yeah, excuse me. You don't see yeah. me standing here? You know, I make. Like, oh, I'm invisible. I'm sorry. Or anything. Exactly. <laughs> oh, oh, so, oh, so you don't see me, Mr. Bailey? Like right. that kind of thing, you right. know, because he didn't mean any harm. He was just exactly. stepping in. He just stepped in and he wasn't thinking because he had his dictaphone already on, his little microphone, his little uh, cassette. Sorry, his little um, recorder. Mm -hmm. um, so he, uh, and then when we were in London, fast forward maybe a month or two later, <clears throat> when you get overseas, I don't care if it's in Vogue or Lucy Pearl in this case, they know that you're not gonna be back to do live interviews anytime soon. You can do oh, phoners, right. mm -hmm. you can do phone interviews and phoners, but you, you're not gonna be back in town across the ocean or across the right. pond, as they say, anytime oh, soon. Person. Right. Exactly. So from 8 a.m. in the morning, you do interview after interview after interview after and all day long. You're just like 60 interviews later. You're like, oh, my God, I'm so tired. I'm so mm. hungry. Oh, my God. You try to eat in between if you can, but you're eating and talking. Um, Yeah, so mm -hmm. it both was, you know. I was probably one of them people one of, in the people face. <laughs> why they eating. One more time. <laughs> Said I was probably one of those people in people face why they eating. In one of those well, interview sessions. <laughs> it was understandable, though, because they're right about that. You can, in those cases, they didn't have cameras on us. So we right. could have done that. Right. But they take pictures after you're done so they can put it in their article. So mm -hmm. you got to make sure you don't have crumbs yeah. on your face. But we could barely eat and talk. Right. So he, Raphael was tired of hearing me talk to just the journalists. And probably in our, by the time we got to our fourth or fifth interview, 
they were only talking to me. Mm -hmm. Raphael was sitting back on the couch like this with his arms folded. And he said, he sat up and he said, um, damn, you know, Ali, because I, I was sitting again, Raphael to my left, Ali to my right. And they were both sitting back on the couch. Mm -hmm. And Raphael sat up and he said, okay, so Ali and I have done a whole lot as well. Like, you know, and he looked around at Ali, around me to Ali. And he said, um, so don't you want to talk to us? What the fuck? Like, we've done a lot. And she said, yes, but Dawn has done a lot more in mm. her London accent. And I was like, oh, my God, because now I'm starting to feel like I got to play small mm -hmm. because they only wanted to talk to me. And then I saw and when we got to Paris, probably about, I don't know, a week Probably later, we were in Paris. Tension. It was causing tension, yes. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, I'm not going to play small just to make you feel better about yourself. Mm -hmm. If you're jealous of me, and I said, Raphael, here's an article. Um, it was an article on, no doubt, Gwen Stefani. Mm -hmm. And it was really on Gwen Stefani, but no doubt was talking in the article as well. And she said that they were jealous of her because we started out as a garage band at first. And now all of a sudden, all of these... Um, publications want to just talk to Gwen. Right. You know she's what I mean? It's, and, well, she's a girl. Yeah, yeah. And she's interesting, anytime, too. Anytime, and she's interesting, but I'm, I'm sure the guys have stuff to say. Raphael's got a great personality. Mm -hmm. He's very funny. Mm -hmm. um, talented, everything. Extremely talented. That is, you can't take that away at all. But, but he right now, had a nasty attitude. <laughs> um, right now, we want to talk to the girls. Shaka Khan, Rufus Shaka Khan. That yeah. happened with them. Mm -hmm. So it's like there's a girl in the group. Stop being a bitch, and let's make this money. And that's why I brought him that article. I used to try to bring articles, as you know, because I brought the article to Cindy, Terry, and Maxine about mm -hmm. Salt and Pepper taking their power back from right. um, their producer. Mm -hmm. None of the girls read the article. I brought the article on on Motley Crue taking back their power from Sylvia Rohn on our label. Mm -hmm. None of the girls read the article. Here it is. I'm bringing another article to another guy or another person in another group. And Raphael didn't read that article either. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, let's stop being jealous of each other and make this fucking paper. I know, right. Can we, we get our bags? We'll do much better if we just, just make this work. Stick together, you guys, because like, I can feel this falling apart. I would have said, like, why is she doing that interview? I'm going to go eat a sandwich. Exactly. Well, you know... <laughs> She would have gotten around to him after a while. Exactly. Like, yeah, eat. Until you tell me to sit down and let's talk, I'm going to eat. I'm going to, you know. Yeah. Um, or do my another thing was interview too, somewhere else. It's, or do another interview. Yeah. yeah. But this is the thing. They never wanted to talk to just, it's like she didn't single me out and say, I want to just talk to Dawn. Oh, they okay, always right. wanted to talk to Lucy Pearl. So the you group. never know. Right. Right. So you never know what that is. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I had lost my house by the time we got to London. Because oh, wow. we were supposed to have our album out by by June, and here it is November, and our album's not out yet. Raphael, you're my record company. You told me when I first signed with you that if I needed money, you didn't have a lot to give me up front as far as an advance. Mm -hmm. But whatever I need later on, you got I'll it. find a way to help you. That's what he told me. And I'm like, cool, I'm down. I'm here. I'm good. Right. Okay, so now we're in June, July excuse me, August, September, October, November, and the album's still not out. Mm. I need help. I'm no, going to no. lose my house. He's like, well, I don't know what to tell you. Every man for himself. Like, wait a minute. I want the deal. <laughs> exactly. That was not what you told me. Right. <clears throat> now, mind you, remember I told you I turned on RCA to mm -hmm. sign with Raphael. Um, <sighs> wow. Really? So this is who you really are. I wish you'd have told me that first because I would have taken that deal with RCA. Okay. Um, even though RCA uh, dropped the whole R&B department, um, I could have probably salvaged my career by saying I can sign with another label before I got dropped. Because exactly. Coco, Coco from SWV lost her deal at RCA. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Kevon Edmonds from After 7 lost his solo deal at RCA. Tyrese was dropped as well. So every, there was a bunch of people. I wouldn't have been the only one, but I could have, mm -hmm. we could have rectified it by finding someplace else to be in the interim right, right. before you, before right. you get dropped. Right. Um, Some of those people would have went to other record labels who already knew you from that. They department. did. Yeah. Yeah, they did. That's absolutely right. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Coco got another deal from another label. Yeah. So they all did. Um, mm -hmm. Tyrese, of course, his, his career was fine. I mean, some of the um, executives then, that was on the R&B section of RCA that got dropped went to other record labels and did that. You know what I mean? So when they, they already did? knew you. I'm saying some of them probably could have and then they, they would have known. Yeah, they would have known you and called you and was like, oh, I'm over here now and you know, 
Exactly. Yeah, anything could have happened is what I'm saying. Yeah, there's a lot of possibilities there, but I yeah. turned them down mm -hmm. to sign with you because I believed in you. You're like my brother. I'm like your sister, 16 years old. We go way back. Mm -hmm. And my problem is, and I'm mad at myself to this day, it takes full responsibility is that I didn't look at the contract the way that I did within Vogue. Mm -hmm. Within Vogue, I redlined stuff. I looked at things. I asked questions. I got an attorney. We had an attorney. <clears throat> but with this, I didn't do that. I didn't have an attorney. I didn't, yeah, I didn't do the same thing. I trusted Raphael. Yeah. What can I say? So that was stupid on my part. Very, very dumb. Not smart at all. I should have known better and I know better. And today I would have done better. But then I just was, ah, it's fine. Raphael got me. He's cool. We're good. We're good. Yeah. And he and, did not. And with all that stuff, how does that make you uh, stronger, like right now? Like I'm saying, right now, as we talking. Like, right now and how you feel like with your which how creative you are how yeah. your, your attitude is how you still happy you you hurt and stuff and that did happen so you have yes. a right to be hurt so sure thank you <laughs> but you don't stop going you still creating your own stuff you're still doing books you still model you still acting and stuff so how does that make you be a better person today thank you i had to heal a lot of that stuff i had to heal a lot of the anger from the past Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it still comes up a little bit because it's natural. You lose your house. I don't think you're going to be very happy about talking well, about the person that helped that make that happen. True. Um, true. In Raphael's case. Yeah. So, um, but I love the work that we did. I love that part of it makes me feel like, oh my God, it was magic. Yes. It was magic doing that record. It was just yes. magic. And uh, it was magic within Vogue as well. Um, I wish my girls would have listened. That's, that's all. Mm -hmm. I wish that they would have listened. I wish that they would have not had the jealousy or whatever it was that they had for me and that they listened so that we could have stood up together. That's mm -hmm. all I was trying to right. do. Exactly. Raphael, mm -hmm. same thing. Damn it. We got something here that the, I mean, it caught on fire. He was just like, whoa. The, I remember when we first got word that um, one of our songs was number one on the chart. He was like, R&B charts. He was like, what? Okay, so we're, like it was huge. Like yes. he could see the pop crossover side had never happened for him with the Tonys, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So that jealousy got, got away with him. But anyway, I digress. So getting back to your question, I feel like I'm accomplished now. I haven't had the success that I wanted, but I'm working on that. Mm -hmm. That'll come in time. Yeah, That's still never there. Too late. Never too yeah, late. it's never too late. I'm not, I'm not worried about that part at all. Um, because at first I was like, I wasted so much time and I'm this and I'm that. And it's like, no, the age doesn't mean shit. You put out a great record. A great record is a great freaking record. Mm -hmm. um, one of the women from Allie, Alvin Ailey, I think she started dancing ballet when she was 37. That is mm -hmm. unheard of. You mm -hmm. start dancing ballet when you're two and three years old. You start early. Right, exactly. And, and yeah, by the time you're 12, you're accomplished. You're doing a lot. By the time you're 15, you're probably going pro mm -hmm. in ballet. Right. But she, And she's a black woman. So she's like, I forgot her name. I think she passed away now. But yeah, she said, you know, if I would have let everybody talk to me about what was not possible, I never would have tried out for Albanelli. Mm -hmm. and, and I made it. Um, so I feel like now, in hindsight, I've learned a lot. I've grown substantially in ways that I couldn't have imagined before. And I'm a law of attraction guru. So it's like now you take your knowledge, you take all the fans that you love and that love you, mm -hmm. um, and you build your career from that. Mm -hmm. Now you take what you know, your knowledge and all the steps that you've, you know what I mean? It's not like I'm 84 and I can't do this. It's like right. now, now you apply the knowledge that you had from the past and everything that you learned and you apply it to your life now mm -hmm. and watch every, I, I can see it actually cutting. I'm watching because I've been doing all these interviews, people are hitting me up for movies about involved. They're hitting yes. me up for um, uh, producers asking me to work and get in the studio or mm -hmm. uh, one guy's got all these ideas and stuff that he can help connect me to getting a fragrance line, mm -hmm. uh, getting a makeup line, getting um, a clothing line, like right. diva and this and diva that. Is... Baby doll. You still want your baby doll. I want to see what you That's... do, baby doll. Exactly. I seen you say, I seen you say <laughs> something about your baby doll thing back yes, in the day. And he's, the... Exa he he's got that too. He's got all those connections. Yeah. So Yeah, yeah, we need a baby yeah. doll. Yeah. Now I just feel like it's time. 
it wasn't time before I was too angry and too bitter and I, mm. I had the wrong people around me too. Now mm. I understand. Oh, it's, I, I got chills. Okay. And that with, was a, with all the people that was not by your side and you still made things turn to gold that you touched. Just think about with the, the right people on your side. Oh my I, God. Thank oh you so much, God. Cuddy. Absolutely. But this is why I just got chills because had I had success back in the day when I first mm. left in Vogue, <clears throat> even if Lucy Pearl would have been huge, that would have made my money huge. And I had a boyfriend at the time who now I don't trust him. I didn't see it at the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. all these other people that were stealing from me, um, the little bit of money that I did have, my sister, I hate to put her on blast, but she was. Um, I wasn't seeing this stuff happen at the time. I was trusting everybody way too much. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. this bitch is... Bitch is back, as Elton John says. That he has a song called "I'm a Bitch, I'm a Bitch, and Bitch is Back." Yes, come on, Stone Cold man. sober, as a matter of fact, because he was on drugs, I guess, at the time. Mm. I'm not sober because I wasn't on drugs and I wasn't an alcoholic, but I am back. Yes, come on back. Now I know how to apply the knowledge that I did, I had then, but I was too angry to see, or I didn't have the knowledge, but now I have it. Mm -hmm. Now everything is come. It's cohesive. It's coming together in the right way with the right, right. people. Right. Oh my God. Right, you know what you know, like no. Yes, I no know what I know. No skepticism, like is he telling the truth or is like, like no, I can tell a lie from a mile away now. I, I oof, Cuddy, I see it so quickly. I told my best friend the other day because it used to be that it would be like months or a couple of years before I started to see. Ooh, no, mm -mm, I got to get rid of you. You got to go. This, and mm -hmm. I'm like, and my mom keeps asking me, well, Dawn, that's a lot of people. I'm like, yeah, because I'm learning my lessons quicker. This is happening faster now. I see the shit before it actually devours me. Mm -hmm. You know, and, I, and it's like, now my learning curve, as I say, is much faster. Exactly. Oop, nope, okay, it's been three weeks. I can see it. Nope, gotta right. go. Exactly, it don't take six months now. Exactly. <laughs> or, exactly. Six years, or six years. Even. Right, because <laughs> if, you, if you see it later, it's too late. Now you gotta pay a bunch of people to walk away. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. thank God my yeah. success didn't happen. You know, yeah. now is the right time, the right people, the right situation, perfect timing. God is good. I'm good. Right. And then you got to let it burn. Like you still got feelings and stuff. So if you get too close to them, once you get, let them go, you still got to let it burn. You're going to miss them that sometimes, hurts. even though it's bad, they bad. Like when yeah. we did have fun when we used to do this, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But you got, you got to let them go all the way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, it, and now right. I do. Now it's much easier because I know how, you know? Right. So do you have a tentative date for the book to come out and everything? Do you know all that? Or I did, but now my yet? production company is like, don't we're not, you know, February 14th is a little too soon. Valentine's Day. I was just like, oh. it's Valentine's, I want to know, but it's too soon. So um, by spring, my, out, my book will be out. My book okay. will be out, yeah. And, and now I have the funding. Go ahead, huh? go ahead. No, you go ahead, you go ahead. Well, I got the funding for my record. Um, oh. Yes, I got it. I got it. I finally got it. But that's yes. for the record. So I'm just like, okay, y'all, but I still need uh, some support. Um, so, right. you know, because you got to allocate your money to actually that. Mm -hmm. Once the album is recorded, then you got to, you got to, um, what do you call it? Um, market, promote, you got to do yeah. videos, you have to mm -hmm. pay radio, you got to do a lot. Yeah. Right. You know? So that money word. is. You're going to need posters and stuff and <laughs> photo shoot. and photos. Yes, for, exactly. Yeah. There you go. Videos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I said. Crew. Yeah, videos cost a lot. <laughs> you're like crew. Well, you know, videos are a lot cheaper than they were, but you still got to have the right video. So they got to edit. All that stuff is including cl included. So now I can do a, a video, a great video for probably a good ten to 15000 Mm -hmm. Whereas back in the day it was eighty and fifty and know, you know sixty thousand dollars. Yeah, so now it's a lot cheaper, but you still got to have it right. So you can't cut corners. Corners. Right. So this is the perfect time for me to say, I know, like, if you need all this, I know you accept donations. So where can we cash app you? Donations you sounds donations. funny. Cuddy, that sounds weird to say donations. Donations <laughs> mean you're not asking for them. We doing this on our own. Donations though. <laughs> So what you want to call it? Funding? What you want to call it? Like, you don't want to give me your Funding cash? Funding is good. Like, uh, so you don't want to give me your cash app? You wouldn't accept them? You're going to reject no! them? No! <laughs> <laughs> Hold up now. I didn't say all that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, didn't I say I've grown <laughs> up? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. No, I'll so give you my cash So let's talk about, app. okay, additional funding. 
Thank it's called you. additional funding. What is your exactly. cash app for additional funding purposes? I love that. That's good. Um, my cash app is stiletto ent. Stiletto ent. Okay. Yeah. Stiletto ent. Exactly. So everybody know that. E N T. It's and it's e actually it's actually on my. You know what? I haven't put it on my um Facebook page yet, but I'll do that today. Now that we're talking about it. Right. Um, but it's well, on my uh, Instagram page. Well, everybody see the link on here, and y'all the link up. And this Thank is for you. additional funding. Yes. Don't be thinking about giving her no donation. She won't fund it. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Donation sounds like you had you handing out the plate in church. <laughs> hey, hey, church dear, you sing it. Call it church dear. Exactly. Church. That's real. You taking yeah. them to church still too. But That's I am right. so That's proud right. of you as if I'm your brother, because I can't say I'm your father, nothing, because look, I no, was, look, I was back you. there in the 90s too. So hey, I'm glad I'm right. still alive. So no, I am proud. Too, I love you and thank you for everything. Like all thank your talent, you. all your spirits that flows across the airwaves. Oh my goodness. Thank you, you know, so much. I'm grateful for all the people that I just ran down in this what hour and a half we've been on the phone. Mm-hmm. Anything else you want to say? Um, so we started at 2.30, I think, and it's it's 4 now. Uh, no, okay. but I just wanted to say you were giving love, and I'm giving love to them as well. I do love them. Yes. That's what hurts so bad about what everything that happened. It's, it's like mm -hmm. whatever the record company thinks, whatever our managers think, whatever our uh, producers think, and our boyfriends and husbands and kids and fathers and mothers, it was down to the four group members and Vogue. It was down to us as sisters to stay together, I should say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was down to Raphael, Ali, and myself to stay together. And so I love them still. That love never goes away. We created something magical oh, definitely. with that both of those groups. So I, I love them. Um, and now they're going to watch me ascend to the heights. And now I don't have anybody to say, hey, should we do this? Hey, should we? We should start a business together. We should start a production company. No, right. Cindy was like, no. So now I can do it all on my own. But I do yeah, love them. Yeah, yeah. And everything happens for a reason. And if you didn't everything. love them, you would just go about your business and not talk about it no more. You, you can only talk well, about, you can only talk about, uh, like, uh, what, what's the word I'm saying? Like, in depth, like, as much as you've been talking about, like, in interviewing yes. people about it. Right. If you didn't love them, you wouldn't have this much to say about it, too, and be on mm -hmm. the tour to get to, to get it known out there. Exactly. You know I, mean? I get your point. Because yeah, it, would sure, sure. it wouldn't mean anything to you. Uh huh. Uh huh. You know, You're right. Your heart. You're absolutely so that's right. That's know. true. Yeah. So. Well, they mean a lot to me. It's just it's sad yeah. because both groups were so incredibly. They were phenomenal. There's no word for it. They should. They were both fire. And for them to not listen, um, yeah, it, it's it fell apart. Uh, everybody else around us was rich, not us. Like that's that sucks. Right. That does. That's woo. Well, now it's time. Now it's time. Woo! Yeah. Now it's it time. Do your thing. Do your thing. I don't have to wait for nobody else. That's right. I got a team because of people. Time ain't waiting on you. That's no time waits for <laughs> no one. So hey, why why should you? The Jackson Five. I think it was the Jackson Five. Time waits for no one. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, Cuddy, thank you yes. for your time today. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having very me on. Much. Thank you for being here. Yes, you're welcome. You're yeah. welcome. What's up, y'all? This is Dawn Robinson, and you are listening to Conversations with Cuddy. <laughs>